you very much for, for joining us for um, Oxford Cricket's first club webinar of the of the year. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ashley Rump. I'm the participation and growth manager at Oxford Cricket. Um, just in case, just in terms of a, a little bit of housekeeping, uh, if we can make sure that uh, we're all muted so that uh, the background noise doesn't interfere with the, the speakers for this evening. Um, as most of you can see from the top left hand corner, we are recording this evening's webinar, uh, which we will then send out following, following this evening. So please fee feel free to make your notes as and when needed, but there will be a recording of this webinar following this evening. If you have any questions as we go through this evening, please put them in the in the chat box. Um, we have aimed to, to answer all your pre-submitted questions uh, that you, you put in when registering for the, for the webinar. Um, if there are any that pop up as we go through them, please do put them in the chat box. Uh, we are aiming to keep this webinar to around about an hour and a quarter because we don't want to keep everyone hanging around too long this evening. Um, so if we do get to the end and we don't have time to cover those questions, we will put an FAQs together and send that out with the recording. If we do have some time, then we will pick up some of those questions at the end. Next slide, please, Nick. So in terms of this evening, uh, this, as I said, this is our first one of the year. Uh, the theme for this evening is, is pre-season headline updates effectively. So working towards the season, uh, weather starting to get a bit warmer, starting to get longer days and lighter. Um, so the whole idea of this is to, to give you the headlines of what you need to know to start prepping for the season. Uh, we will look to run another webinar at the back end of March where we'll be more specific around our topics and go into some of the, the greater detail there as well. You'll hear from a number of different of us this evening uh, as we go through the topics. So it won't just be me talking this evening, um, but we will cover those as we go through. Next slide, please, Nick. So just before we get into the into the some of the detail for this evening, um, just wanted to, to run through a little bit of an update from a from a board perspective. Uh, as many of you will know, we went out to advert for some um, board new board directors at the back end of last year, and through that interview process, we identified four new directors that have joined the board uh, since November. In a minute, you will hear from from two of them, Dave Hanson and Paul Taylor, um, but on the screen you'll now see the board of eight directors that we have here at Oxford Cricket and their specific roles uh, and what they cover uh, and what specialities they bring to the board. So um, uh, without further ado, I'll hand over to, uh, to Dave Hanson, who's going to go through some reflections uh, and then we'll move on to Paul Taylor, who will pick up some other bits of detail uh, for the directors. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Ash. Um, shall I pick this up, Paul? Um, Welcome, welcome everyone, and thank you very much for attending this evening. Um, really pleased to be part of the Oxford Cricket Board, and I've thoroughly enjoyed my uh, introduction over the last three months. I'm really excited about the cricket season ahead. Um, but you know, one or two reflections. Um, uh, lots of teamwork, fantastic teamwork happened in, in during the 2020 season. We really want to keep keep that going, um, and. That there is an incredible level of anticipation at board level, um, and as I've noticed right through throughout the county, as we look to uh, let our uh, our children out um, and getting ready for the cricket season. So, um, uh, the cricket board really want to harness that and uh, make sure that uh, we're well prepared. If you can flick on Nick, thanks. So these are one or two messages from our chairman, Chris Clements, um, who you, many of you will know. Uh, Chris is very keen to pass on the message that Oxfordshire cricket is in a really, really strong place. And that, you know, we're really pleased that we could work with many of you during 2020 um, and, and, and help give you access to, uh, to funding areas. So hopefully, you're getting the same kind of sense um, that we are, that um, the, the relationships are strengthening. So um, the shortened summer, what happened during July and August and September, part of September last year, uh, meant that I think we're in a really good place for uh, to, to kick off with uh, the, the junior and the, um, the adult season at the end of April. And um, you'll hear the message COVID compliance mentioned quite a few times during this next hour and a quarter. 
Uh, some of us have been on an ECB call today, and, and that's the kind of key thing that uh, they're looking for, for a key message that they're looking to deliver to us, and then we're cascading it to you. So COVID compliance is going to be massive. Cricket is in a fantastic place and has a, a terrific perception as a result of you know, no outbreaks being identified at cricket clubs during 2020 that uh, that they're aware of uh, at, at Lords. So, um, thank you very much for all the hard work that all you, every, all our clubs did um, to support that perception in 2020, and long may it continue going forward. Because uh, rest assured, um, there are other winter sports that uh, have not been successful in um, gaining that perception. Shall I say? Uh, but really nice to meet you all. Um, uh, I'll now pass over, if I can, to uh, to Paul Taylor. Paul, you'll need to unmute yourself. Classic failure tonight, that was. Yeah. It? First one of the evening. Which sure it won't be the last. Um, Good evening, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be uh, sort of addressing you this evening, and, and, and my role is to sort of start to look forward to, to what we can look forward to uh, for the up and coming season, uh, based on obviously the announcement uh, on uh, on Monday. Um, I, I think there are a few things that are in the pipeline that uh, are mentioned on this slide, which I'll talk through, and I'll provide a bit of a summary and, and, and sort of a message from me to you. Um, the club county grant scheme um, from the ECB, which should have been launched last year, um, will be launched in April this year. So that's something to look, look out for. Uh, and I think there's a, a session on that later in, in the presentation with a bit more detail on that. Um, the, the Oxford Creek Ball competition structure is, is now launched. Um, and we're looking to obviously to, to expand that. And again, more details to follow in the, uh, in the seminar later. Um, it's the 50th, 50th anniversary of the Oxfordshire Cup. Um, and uh, being as I'm a, a, a Banbury, a Banbury uh, committee member and chairman of cricket, we've run it for a few years over the last few years. So hopefully we'll continue those winning ways. Um, but no, it's a, it's a great, uh, great um, anniversary to have. And I'm sure there's going to be lots of great cricket played within that. Uh, the big news, obviously, was the uh, the Chiro League um, and the OCA combining resources over the course of the winter. Um, to hopefully bring a, a, a structure that uh, will, will function and work for everybody. Uh, no doubt there'll be a few teething problems, as there are in all these sort of major restructures, but um, I think in the long term it will prove hugely beneficial to all clubs in the county. Uh, and I will hopefully be closely uh, involved in uh, seeing how that rolls, rolls out, being as my role sort of on the board is, is looking at leagues and how they're operating uh, and also developing facilities at clubs. Uh, so then are two to the key areas. Um, the ECB, um, the, the funding that we get from the ECB uh, is included in a county, county partnership agreement, not customer partnership agreement, but a county partnership agreement, which uh, is in the final drafts uh, of being signed off. Um, that should happen over the next few weeks, uh, which will give us confirmed funding, obviously subject to COVID uh, going away uh, for the next four years. Uh, which gives us some certainty on, on what we can supply to you as clubs from an Oxford cricket perspective. <coughs> some good news about the, the pathway. Uh, there's 850 kids involved in that. Uh, and hopefully if all goes to plan, that will kick off at the beginning of April uh, so we can get the kids in the, in the system uh, and get them active and obviously start to select squads for the matches in the summer. Um, and obviously there's a plan to run all county representative teams uh, in, in this summer period. So it's uh, lots of exciting stuff to look forward to. Fingers crossed we can, we can get there. Um, I think it's fair to say that last year we proved to the government that we can run a COVID compliant competition uh, at recreational level. Um, as David already mentioned, unlike some other sports, um, other team sports, you know, we're in a great position. Um, but we do need to learn some lessons from certain aspects of, of what we did last year. Uh, primarily around off-field off activities. Um, so on the field, I think we were okay, we were pretty compliant, but off the field, I think there was a few issues around social distancing and things like that. So we just need to be switched on to, to the fact to make sure we're absolutely watertight when it comes to um, government legislation so that we can continue to play cricket during the summer. Um, the message from the government to the ECB is that they are cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to complete a full season this year, which will be great. 
uh, albeit potentially with the restrictions in terms of changing facilities and match play rules and playing conditions that were in place for the short 2020 season. Um, so my message to you at this time is, okay, if you haven't already done so, then start to get the ground ready. Um, get your volunteers and club coaches mobilised and in place and ready to go so that when we're given the green light, we can, we can hit the ground running. Um, we need to be ready for this because I think we do have a unique opportunity to play a key role in getting kids active again after months of being sort of locked away indoors. And we've got to be ready to embrace that. Um, but also, it's not just about the kids. I think it's about the adults as well. Um, I think last year, a lot of clubs saw players take a season off because it wasn't a full season of cricket. It was cricket they possibly didn't want to play. But we've got to really try hard to re-engage with those players uh, and keep them in the game. Um, so seize the opportunity. Um, there's going to be lots of work to do, um, but hopefully we can embrace it and, and the game of the cricket in Oxfordshire will really thrive. Uh, key dates um, for you guys, obviously 29th of March is a key date to get activity going, uh, but that will be announced on the 22nd for the government review will take place on the 22nd of March um, to let you know that actually we can start outdoor activities on the 29th. So. All the very best, and it's been uh, good to address you this evening. Uh, any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, good day, for, for, for bringing that to, to life and just sharing the thoughts and reflections of, of the board of, of where we have been through 2020, where we are now and where we are moving forward. So just to pick up on a little bit more of that detail that, that Paul went through that we, we had on the ECB call earlier. As he said, that we're... we're Cautiously optimistic, or the ECB and the government cautiously, op or cautiously optimistic about the roadmap out of out of lockdown and out of um, out of the, the pandemic. Uh, the, the announcement on Monday night gives us at Oxford Cricket more optimism about being able to deliver a full season, um, both through our own programmes and our competitions. As you'll see, a lot of that information is is out there and, and available already in terms of. Um, entering those competitions, running with those programmes and come some of that detail will come on later. But it is key that we do that whilst adhering to government ECB guidelines and being COVID compliant at the same time. In terms of that government update, obviously 29th of March is the date for the return of recreational cricket, um, but that is, review, that is going to be confirmed on the 22nd of March um, by, the, by the government and that's for outdoor adult and uh, junior cricket as, as well. Uh, in terms of uh, the clarity on some of that, though, there is still some clarity that's needed around what does travel restrictions uh, apply to that, uh, how does that affect coach education delivery, and also who has jurisdiction over local outbreaks. So last year, some parts of the country, when there was a local outbreak, there was a lack of clarity around who had the jurisdiction. Was it the local authority or was it the national government guidelines? So there is still more clarity to come towards the 29th of March. In terms of step two for the 12th of April, which again, the, the final decision will be made on the 5th of April, that's more for the outdoor service area. So for clubs in terms of being able to offer your, your, your bar or your beverages outdoors at, at the club, uh, and also for potential junior indoor cricket. Hopefully by that time of year, the, war, the weather will be warm enough, uh, light enough, etc. that we shouldn't need to go indoors, but they are saying that junior um, sport or cricket can go indoors on that date. Step three for the 17th of May, which again, the decision will be made a week earlier on the 10th of May. This is again for, this will be for indoor hospitality. From a, so from a cricket point of view, it is the bar, it is the use of the clubhouse. But the clarity on exactly how that is done and what will be entailed there will come nearer the time. And again, adult indoor sport. For cricket, certainly by the 17th of May, we really hope that we wouldn't have to go indoors and the season will be up and running by that point as well. And then for the 17th, sorry, for then for the 21st of June, which is step four, and the decision made on the 24th of June, that's around the social distancing review as well. So that is then breaking down whether we come out of social distancing and back to, I guess, life as normal or life as we had it pre-COVID. From an Oxford point of view, as Paul's already reflected on, there is a key role for us to play here in getting active, not only just on the kids on the junior side, but on the adult side also on supporting our communities around us to help come through and come out the other side of the pandemic. The ECB have said that they will be looking to uh, release guidelines around uh, return to play over the next couple of weeks. Uh, in particular, the on-field guidance, so they've mentioned to us that would be very similar to the 2020 season. 
So they're predicting minor changes or minor tweaks to that for the on-field side of the game. The off-field guidance though, especially around change rooms, bars, clubhouses, teas and travel, uh, that needs to be reviewed. And as Paul and Dave already alluded to, learn, taking the learnings that winter sports have experienced throughout the last six months or so. Nick, next slide, please. So just a, a far, far sort of a reminder for me around affiliation. Our affiliation is still open. Uh, so far, we've had 43 clubs within Oxfordshire affiliate to us for, for 2021. So if you haven't already, please do. Uh, this is needed for entries into the into league cricket on a Saturday, but also into our competitions and our, our programmes as well. It is for our safeguarding support and our funding support uh, and around our women's and girls and general support as well. The other key thing from, from our point of view here is by going through the affiliation process and sharing your officer's uh, contact details with us, you, we can better communicate with you as clubs around the information that's coming over the next month or two months as well. So please do go through that process, affiliate and share your, your officer's details with us so we can communicate with you as best as possible. For all the affiliation data that is up on our, our website and how you go through that process, but again, that will be sent out when we send out all the information from this evening. Next slide, please, Nick. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to, to Paul Short now, who's going to go through our competitions update around uh, youth and senior cricket. Paul, over to you. Thanks, Ash, and good evening, everyone. Um, just a quick whiz over, really, the youth competitions. Um, I think 2020 was, despite it being a very curtailed season, we've crammed an awful lot of into those last few months. So we really want to build on that again this year. Um, so, so the uh, we're planning for a full season, which I think has probably been um, endorsed by what, what's happened over the last week uh, with the latest government announcements and what Ash and Paul have been discussing. So last season we had 49 clubs entering the competitions. And as at this morning, I had 30 clubs in there. So looking for a few more, but I think well, I've been in contact with most of them. And I think the likelihood is we're going to be up to around the late 40s again, clubs entering competition. So that, that's excellent news. Um, but if there is anyone out there that's got any query, just give me a shout this evening or over the next couple of days, because I'm around to take those. Um, again, just to reiterate, closing date is Friday. Um, and we will over the weekend take down the club pay link because we're really keen to get the uh, fixtures out week commencing the 8th of March so just to give me a chance next week to get all the fixtures compiled into them into play cricket uh, refresh the handbook and get all of those out to all clubs uh, week commencing 8th of March for fixtures for all competitions uh, um, again there are regular competitions for under 11s 13s and 15s including softball and Super 8 competitions because we did have to restrict the offering last year, but we're returning back to all of those. Other good news, the ECB national competition to returning this summer, um, the under 13s and under 15s. So the winner of the Ron Morsley Cup to represent Oxfordshire and the winner of the Dennis Swanton League again to represent the county. Um, the only difference this season is we're combining the under 17 and under 19 competition similar to we did last year. So we felt that work fairly well and we think it gave a more competitive competition thanks nick next one please okay we've now we've got the ecb dates for the finals days it's all sorry for the ecb national competition first second third round etc we're working back and tentatively the dates for the under 13 league finals day will be sunday the 18th of july the ron maudsley finals day sunday the 27th of june and the under 15 league sunday the 4th of july I would stress they are tentative at the moment. And the under-19 league, again, that final day will be confirmed uh, for a date in September. We just need to make sure we avoid the Bernard Tollett and Wilf Bennett 50th anniversary, the day at Wormsley. So again, that's being confirmed and will be communicated in the next week. We've got one hangover from 2020, where because of the amount of cricket we crammed in, we didn't have time to fit in the under-19 under finals day because um, a number of the guys that were playing in it went back to university and it wasn't fair to, to play the final stay without most of the guys that got them to the final. Uh, so we're looking at probably having had some discussions today with some of the university students, they haven't got much time off in April because of various term changes. 
So I think we'll be looking for a mid to late June finals day to complete the under 19 finals from 2020. Um, and again, that'll be communicated within the next week. Um, there's two other things we're looking at um, over and above the competitions that we've got out at the moment for youth for the entries. Um, there's the interest from a number of clubs around under nine softball. Something else we're picking up and also there's one other in one other expression of interest form that's going to hit some of the youth managers mailbox um is a proposed new competition in the under 11s under 13s and under 15s slightly longer competition for 13s it'll be a 30 over a side under 13 35 over and 15 40 over a side um to run on sundays and bank holidays later season again to pick up really on the interest that we had in August and September in playing cricket and just to give as much opportunity as possible between our usual competitions, pathway and adult cricket. Um, so we're, you'll see in the mailbox an invite come out or an expression of interest, sorry, come out to you just to say whether your club's interested in participating in such a competition and at what age group. And we'll go from there. I hope you'll get interest on it, but I'll keep you, keep you updated as I, as I get replies on that. Thanks, Nick. Okay, big year this year for the youth, sorry, for the adult competition, the Oxfordshire Senior Cup. It's a 50th anniversary. Uh, first one's a competition in St. John. Um, again, to celebrate this year, um, because of the kind generosity of the Porter family, we're offering free entry to all affiliated clubs. Um, we've got about 20 entries so far, so that's um, again, closing dates Friday, 5th of March. So any clubs that want to enter it, please get your, please get your submission in. Uh, the final stay is going to be 18th of September. Um, and we're COVID permitting, we're intending to return to Wormsley again for which is also the guys know. That's, that's the plan. And again, subject to the clubs entering, the early stages of the competition will be um, grouped, split geographically. Again, just to reduce the amount of traveling on a weekday. Thanks, Nick. All right, that's everything from me at this point. I'll come back for co-chair later. Thanks, Ash. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, I'm now going to hand over to, to Ed Wilson, our, our Women's and Girls Officer, who's going to take you through some play cricket information and some updates with play cricket. Thank you. Ned, over to you. Yep, thanks, Ash. Um, yeah, so just to give you a few headlines around play cricket. Um, so obviously it's made for leagues, clubs and players. It's been designed and tested um, from people within the recreational game. From a league point of view, it enables you to run competitions, um, fixtures, uh, statistics and end of season averages. From a club point of view, you can send mailing lists to all your players um, and you can really use it as a club management tool. And from a player point of view, it gives you an opportunity to create a player profile as well as having really in-depth um, sort of, you can put your selection on there and that will help drive the sort of drive the club and you can also have all your stats built up over your career through play cricket and you also get weekly updates from play cricket saying how you've done also a bit of information on your opponents that kind of stuff so it's really in depth uh, next slide please nick so from a club point of view it enables you, enables you to connect with your league and it makes match days even better by using the play cricket scorer or the scorer pro app which I'll talk about shortly. Um, always know your player availability. So as I've just hinted at, as a player, you can go onto the play cricket system for your club and say which dates you are and aren't available. Um, and you can share team selections with your members. You can also create communication lists with your members and players all in one place through your play cricket website. Um, so through that, you can create various different mailing lists, whether that's seniors, juniors, men's cricket, women's cricket, boys cricket. And you can then really target the members of your club and make sure that they're getting all the messages. From a player's point of view, um, it allows you to access all of your stats, including track performances and averages over your entire season and career. Um, you receive personalised stats emails and congratulatory emails from England stars for your top performances. Uh, so it's always nice on a Monday morning if you've scored a 50 and you get an email from Joe Root with his thumbs up saying well done. Um, also enables you to manage your availability and you get notified through play cricket of your selection and any of the important news from your club and league.
So one of the great things about Play Cricket is there's two scoring apps which tie into it. So playcricket.com scorer is a free scoring app that you can use on a mobile phone and a tablet. It's a really, really easy to use system. And it's really helps certainly when you're playing sort of second, third, fourth team club cricket and you've got a few youngsters that might want to get into scoring, they're more likely to pick up an app or a phone and use it that way rather than the traditional score that we find these days. And it's really easy to use. The Play Cricket Scorer Pro is a laptop based version um, and it gives you a lot of analysis, a lot of data. And it's already being used by around 5,000 scorers across England and Wales. Teams can be uploaded uh, and fixtures can be generated automatically through the app. And scorecards can be uploaded and verified immediately from your club and your league. Um, I would advise anybody that hasn't got the app on their phone just to download it. It's free. and You can have a little play around with it, do a mock scoring game, maybe watch a test match tomorrow and score that and just to see how easy it is. It's really, it is really good. So just to reiterate the benefits of play cricket. So it's a comprehensive and free club management tool. It allows you to communicate instantly with your club members. It allows clubs to live score games and immediately upload them onto a website. So that's the other benefit about live scoring the games. If you have club members that are away on holiday, for example, you can still find out how your club is getting on. Um, also, if you're you know, playing in one team and you've got three or four teams at your club, when you stop for tea, rather than texting around to find out results, you can just look online and see how everyone's getting on. So it's a really good tool to see live scoring. Um, it's an easy to use app for parents and children. So again, it's easy to get volunteers on board. Scoring is normally one of the jobs that people least like to do on a Saturday, but it's quite easy with the app. Um, you get a free and easy to maintain club website through Play Cricket. So some really good examples of clubs that have used that um, to their advantage and created some really good websites. Uh, it gives players their personal stats at their fingertips and registered users get weekly email updates from Play Cricket. So those updates will include your stats, your club most valuable player leaderboards, and also some information on your opposition. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'll move on to women and girls recreational cricket. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Um, so a couple of headlines from the ECB um, regarding women and girls recreational cricket. 14% of girls are active every day compared to 20% for boys. 80% of girls feel that they do not belong in sport. And four in 10 girls define themselves as sporty compared to more than six out of 10 boys. Um, out of 1.9 million 16 to 54 year old women played in the team sport last year, but um, in the last 12 months, sorry, and only 10% of that was played it was cricket. Less than 15% of cricket clubs offer women and or girls cricket. So it's very much a postcode lottery to play and access to the sport is not necessarily easy if there's no club for miles offering it. So a couple of ways in which we need to look to grow the women's game uh, and the girls game, sorry, and uh, work with clubs to create inclusive and welcoming environments for women and girls. So we need to increase the number of clubs offering women and girls junior, softball and hardball cricket and increase the percentage of girls in national programmes. We need to diversify the governance of clubs so we get more representation from females on club committees. We need to develop and encourage a new wave of female coaches, officials and activators slash volunteers and increase the number of female coaches that are available in the game. Next slide, please. Um, so these, these are my details. I started the role in January. I've been in post for just seven or eight weeks now. I apologize for the picture if you've just ate your dinner. It's not a, not a great image. Um, but if anybody is involved in women and girls cricket at their club and you haven't spoke to me yet, I'm keen to speak to as many clubs as I possibly can. Um, so if I haven't reached out to you yet, you are on my list to contact, but if you are desperate to speak to me, my details are here. They'll be circulated after the event as well. So in terms of an update from, from me since I've started the role seven or eight weeks ago, um, we've carried out a survey in January to gauge the state of play regarding women and girls cricket countywide. Uh, 28 clubs responded, which is really positive. 13 of those clubs have women's sections and 13 have girls sections. It's not always the same club that has a women and a girls section. Some will have a women's section and not a girls and vice versa. A number of clubs want to start women and all girls teams in 2021, which is really encouraging. Uh, one of the issues we've seen and the feedback we got was that there's no organised cricket for girls and it's hard for, to find opponents. And more than half of the clubs have very few volunteers to run women and girls cricket. So some of them only have one, some have one or two. Uh, and there was a real lack of female coaches countywide um, available at clubs. 
Next slide, please, Luke. So what have we done? We've done quite a lot in the first seven weeks. We've created a Gills competition structure for the 2021 season. So, so far, the under 11 softball league has attracted seven and uh, eight entries now. And we've had another one in this afternoon. Um, under 13 softball league has five entries and the under 15s hardball Gills league has four entries. Uh, so it's a really good start. Uh, and it shows that we can we can now run some sort of competition this season. And hopefully that will grow year on year. Um, we've got a bursary that we can utilize to fund women's coaching courses. So just for more detail, if you've got any women or girls involved at your club that want to get into coaching, um, the Oxfordshire Cricket Bursary will fund 50% of a level one course. So that's £75 of the £150 cost, and it will fund uh, up to £100 for a level two course. We've formed a women and girls advisory group, and we have some forums next week where we'll be introducing those to everybody. Um, we've also organised four women's softball festivals and one girls softball festival so far. We are looking for more clubs to host these festivals. So if you're interested, please reach out to me and give me some dates and we can look to set something up. Um, we've held our first Women and Girls Forum uh, a couple of weeks ago and we had 28 clubs join in, which was a really good start. Uh, the next Women's Forum is on the 1st of March at 7 p.m. and the next Girls Forum is on the 4th of March at 7 p.m. The reason we've chose to split them off from Women and Girls Combined is because it's a very different message that we want to spread through the women's game that we might do for the girls game. Now we have a girls competition, we want a separate evening to sort of talk about that and give that a bit of focus, really. Next slide, please. I think that might be really good. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Ed. Thanks for, for the update on, on play cricket and the information there. Um, play cricket have done quite, quite a lot of uh, work behind the scenes in updating their platform and their usability. So. Um, if you are interested, then please do use it. I see there's been a, a question about its compatibility with the Cherwell League and, and Leslie, who is part of the, the committee, has, has noted that it's not currently compatible or the Cherwell League is not currently compatible with play cricket at this point in time, but I believe it's something they are working towards, but it does need clubs to start signing up for it to all become compatible. Um, thanks for, for the update on women's and girls, Ed, as well. And that's a, it's great to see what, we, what you've achieved in the first seven or eight weeks. Um, if clubs would like to be part of one of those forums next week, then please do reach out to reach out to Red. Um, they are designed to, to help shape women's and girls within within Oxfordshire. So please do reach out to Red uh, and start communicating with him. I'm going to hand over to, to Zoe now. Um, so Zoe's going to take us through national programs, in particular All Stars and Dynamo. So Zoe, over to you. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so if you're on the ECB national programs call um, a couple of weeks ago, this might be a little bit repetitive, but, but bear with me and it might jog a, a few memories. Um, so moving on to all stars first. So um, this is for five to eight year olds typically to get them involved in cricket um, and having a great first experience. So the sessions are normally run for eight weeks starting from May, but this year there's that window of July to September to run eight weeks worth of sessions to tie in with the summer holidays. Um, good news for sort of clubs getting money back for this year. So it, the price has doubled that clubs get money back from All Stars. So from a recommended retail price of £40, um, clubs now receive £10. Um, in previous years, it has been £5. So that's um, a real positive there. All participants will still receive their kit. Um, when they first sign up from a backpack to a bat um, to a t-shirt with their name on it as you can see in the picture there um, and then all clubs will then be supported to run activator training sessions um, so in existing activators this year will have to attend a webinar so that will last 45 minutes um, to six to 60 minutes um, and they will also have to um, log on to a safeguarding course as well so that's for all existing activators the reason for that is to just refresh the memory um considering a lot of activators did have a year out um in 2020 um and the four new um new activators they will have to attend an online session which will be separate to the existing activator session um and then a face-to-face -face session also but that will be based on um government guidelines um, and as and when we're allowed to do it um, clubs will still receive all their kit to run the sessions this year on top of the £10 additional back from each participant um, you'll receive £5 for each sign up you get for each participant sign up you get um, and then you can order kit from that £5 as well so there you get the additional starter pack which 
um, clubs should already have if you've run it before. If you're a new club, you'll get the, the starter pack along with £5 per participant um, for that. So that's good. Um, and then you'll be given also a, a load of resources um, which, are, which are online. Um, so what, what will happen is that I sent a link out um, today to all stars and dynamos leads. Um, so you should receive that. If anyone wants the marketing resources for all stars dynamos, then I can send that over to you via email. Um, and then all the money can't buy experiences um, as well are still going through the ECB. Um, but then again, we're going to do try and do some stuff locally um, for all stars um, this year as well. I mean, we don't have any Joe Roots in the county, but I'm sure we can sort sort something out there. Um, and at the moment, 37 centres um, have been confirmed for 2021. So if you've confirmed that you're going to become an all-star centre, thank you very much. Next slide, please, Nick. So Dynamo's Cricket. Um, so this didn't launch in 2020. So this is launching for the first time um, for this year. And it's aimed for 8 to 11-year-olds, um, which, again, is for children who want to get involved in cricket or it might be the next step up from all stars and the all stars graduates who may not be ready for hardball cricket um, again this can be run in that eight week period from may to july which is normally the typical week to run national programs but again there's that option for the summer holiday um, eight weeks as well from july to september um, so the the rrp for that is 40 pounds and clubs will receive 25 pounds back from each participant which hasn't changed from last year um, and again um, children will receive their their kit when they sign up um, and this it would just be a new balance top with um, their name and a number on the back as you can see in the picture there um, and again clubs new clubs to dynamos will receive their kit ready for for their sessions I believe um, all the kit will be sent in April um, but I will be in touch with all clubs that sign up to, to guide you through that process. Um, and again, all the marketing resources are on the link that I sent earlier today to all stars and, and Dynamo's leads. Um, but if anyone wants the resources, let me know. Um, and again, the money can't buy experiences um, will be will be linked to the 100 this year. The activated training courses, um, again, it will be the same. Existing activators will need to attend um, a, a session a webinar um, but the all stars and dynamos session will be linked as we can see some very strong similarities between the two programs so we won't have separate sessions for all stars and dynamos it will be all linked for that one session um, and again new activators will need to attend the online session and the face-to-face -face as well um, and we've had 22 centers confirm that you're going to um, sign up to be a dynamist centre which is really good and we've got two girls only centres as well this year which is really positive um, and there is that option of working with myself and Ed to to make sure um, if you would like to create a sort of a, a girls section within your club then you can set up a, a girls only dynamos um, centre which which could support with that. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Zoe. Thanks for <clears throat> thanks for the update on, on All Stars and, and Dynamos. Um, if you have any questions for Zoe, you either pop them in the chat or do go direct to, to Zoe. Um, just for a, a point of clarity around the Dynamos funding, it does say on the slide that it's RIP, RRP £40 and uh, 25 then goes back to the, to the club. Uh, if, that, if you charge more than that £40, uh, the £15 goes back to the, the ECB and then above that then goes to you as a as a club so if you charge 50 pound then 35 pound will come back to you as a as a club so just for a, a point of clarity on on that but thank you very much so um gonna hand over to to stuart murphy um to go through our safeguarding update stuart can i hand over to you please yeah no worries okay um first of all uh good evening everyone thank you for your time um I haven't really got anything uh, exciting stash wise or money wise to, to give you this evening. So I will keep this as brief as possible. The Safe Hands Management System club implementation is going ahead. There was a bit of a hiccup with the system this week, um, but that now seems to have uh, been resolved. Clubs will be getting emails individually um, 
uh, from the ECB over the coming months and weeks. So if you haven't had yours yet and you're a club mark club, then uh, don't panic, it's on its way. Um, one thing that, that me and Leslie are really keen for club safeguarding officers to do is the online webinar. Um, they are taking the place of the face-to-face -face training that we usually run and have run over the past couple of years. These webinars are the training that you'll have this year. Um, obviously with COVID and other, other things getting in the way, we're not able to do face-to-face, -face, so please uh, book yourself onto one of those webinars. The links are either via the last newsletter that came out or on the OCB website. So please go and have a look at those. Um, one thing that, that has changed in, in the last couple of weeks is a title change to safeguarding. Um, club welfare officers and county welfare officers have now changed to club and county safeguarding officers. This reflects really more of what we do and it also brings us in line with other clubs, other clubs, other sports um, such as football and hockey and uh, the ECB are really keen to, 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 to ensure that, that the right job title is, is there for us all. Um, We've also updated the safeguarding referral form recently. And again, that comes out, uh, well, that will be coming out by the next newsletter and will also be put on the Oxfordshire Cricket website. This uh, referral form is for safeguarding matters. Um, there will be um, some changes in it and uh, the ones that you used to see in your safe hand book um, have now, uh, are now obsolete. So those, these new ones will be coming out to you all. Just seen a couple of questions. Um, uh, Roz, fantastic. Um, tried to get booked on. We actually had a conversation earlier on with the, um, with the ECB. They are gonna be putting more out. Um, we have asked that they do put more out, particularly in the evenings, when we know that um, more, more people are likely to be around. So I'm hopeful that that will be listened to and uh, they'll do some more evening ones towards the end of March. That seems to be the cutoff date from the ECB's point of view around when they'll be running the webinars. Um, Richard, uh, club welfare officers again be able to perform DBS checks? Yep, that's that's a really good question. We we asked that as well. Um, at the moment, um, not sure if I'm completely honest, we have asked, um, and they well. The ECB safeguarding team are taking that on a week to week basis, so we expect it to be in line when we can all get back outside and meet. Um, but again, that's something that, that we're really keen to push. As a positive, Ashley told me earlier on that the workforce are all back next week. That will enable more of us to uh, sign off DBSs for various people. So my advice is to, is to keep putting them in. If you have coaches, captains, or other people undertaking regulated activity whose DBS expires before what we perceive to be the start of the season, then, then please carry on as normal. Um, we would much rather have a bit of a backlog uh, rather than sort of everyone leaving it to the start of the season and then worrying that, that people aren't up to date. So um, 
I would advise you to carry on as normal and, uh, and, and we will get them signed off as soon as we can. Um, Alex, uh, I intended a webinar last week, um, but I've had no follow up information. That's a really good question. Um, I would uh, reply to the email that gave you the booking information. Um, and therefore, that should be, well, they should then provide you any information that you need. Um, we're not too sure what the ECB are doing in terms of follow up for certificates and other things. Um, again, that's something that, that we've asked about. So, so hopefully that will, uh, yeah, hopefully be clear from them. There's a few people who have asked about who the webinar is for. The webinars are for either current sub safeguarding officers who are about to expire, not expire personally, but their certification about to expire, and also for new club safeguarding officers as well. So regardless of whether you're day two or year three into the role um, the webinar is a place to go um, for for that particular training at the moment and that's the safe hands training there is going to be some um, hopefully some safeguarding young cricketers uh, information coming out fairly soon about how to click on a link and activate that um, we're aware that, that that's also an issue. We've asked the ECB earlier on today about getting some set up so that uh, we can have a click through from Oxfordshire that will allow uh, everybody that needs a, a safeguarding young cricketers um, certificate to, to attend that online session and, and, and complete the course. Uh, Yep, Simon, fantastic, great question. I think Les has already answered that. Um, it will be uh, three years, um, uh, three years normally, but the webinar is for two years and that then hopefully will allow us um, to, to get through uh, this COVID period. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's that's for me. Obviously, I don't want to keep everyone too long. But if you do have any questions, then then please get in touch with Leslie and myself, um, and uh, we will do our best to answer the questions. We don't know the answers to everything at the moment, um, but anything that we don't know, we will make sure that uh, we we refer it to the ECB to get to get answers from. Okay, thank I think that's it for, for me. Thank you very much, Stuart. Thank, thanks a lot for that. Um, no worries. Yeah, if there are any other further uh, safeguarding questions, then please do chat, pop them in the chat box, and we'll, if we've got time, we'll pick them up at the end. If not, we'll add them to the to the FAQs when we when we send them out. Um, so the ne next next section is is from me around uh, club funding. So um, Nick, next, thank you. So. Uh, just to highlight it again, that the funds that are out there or the funding pots that are out and they're available to clubs at this, this point in time. Uh, the return to the return to cricket grant is still available, is still open to clubs um, who haven't applied for the return to cricket grant yet, uh, but it is only open until the 15th of, of March. So we, we've got just over a couple of weeks now until, until that grant closes. Um, it is for up to £3,000 for the ongoing costs of, of running the club pitch renovations or COVID-19 ad adaptations. Um, th there is a, a much longer list of, of guidance notes and FAQs on that, which is available up on the ECB website. Uh, but the application forms are available through, through myself. So if you um, haven't applied through that grant yet, then please do pick that up with me and come, come to me and we can, we can discuss that and provide the application forms for you. It's a quick and easy process. It's fill, filling out uh, a couple of bits of information on the form and usually they're turned around within within 10 days or 10 days or so. So please do come and have a conversation if you need around that. Uh, the emergency loan scheme that the ECB opened up um, started last year still runs. Um, it's there for both clubs and leagues. Um, it, at this point in time, they've put no end date on it. So it is open indefinitely. 
Um, any applications can be done through the, the ECB's new investment management um, system. Um, so clubs who have gone through that process have used the online on there. Uh, we effectively um, approve the, the users on that and then the rest of the conversation is with, with the ECB around how you go through that through that process. Um, those are for, for, for loans up to, to up to £5,000 uh, at this point in time as, as well. Uh, the England and Wales Cricket Trust interest-free loan scheme still runs, so it has been running for a number of years. It still continues to, to run. Uh, it, it does have a, a an ongoing 12 month payment freeze on it at this point in time. So if you took up a loan through that, through that interest free loan scheme, you wouldn't pay back for at least 12 months on that. Um, <clears throat> it is for, for your more capital projects um, as, as well. So for those investments in your, in your facilities, and again, the application form is on the, the investment management system from the ECB. Um, those are those will be the links there to, to go to that site to, to pick up through those applications. But again, if you have any issues with that, then please do come directly to me. Um, Paul Taylor at the start mentioned about the, the county grant scheme. Uh, so the county grant scheme is due to launch this year. It was due to launch last year, but um, obviously it was due to launch just before the lockdown, the pandemic hit, and all that funding was taken into the, the, the emergency funds that we just talked about. Uh, so it is again due to launch this year and it's due to be launched in spring of this year after the close of the return to, to cricket grant. Um, it is replacing the small grant scheme so many of you would have been through the, the small grant scheme in the past so it is replacing that scheme. Uh, it is there to, to, to focus on four main areas so women's and girls, uh, sustainability within, within clubs, um, welcome environments and making, making cricket facilities welcome into to the communities as well as cricketers and support the playing the game as, as well. At this point in time, we haven't been shared the, the detail behind the county grant scheme, but we will be sharing that with you once we've had sight of it and once we have further details on what it actually entails, the application process and what can be applied for within there. But it will focus around those, those four main areas in terms of the, in terms of the scheme. Next slide, please, Nick. So, a number of you will have heard about um, the hashtag funds for runs um, funding pot that was launched by uh, in joint uh, partnership between LB Insurance and, and England and Wales Cricket Board Trust uh, around about a couple of months ago. Uh, is a is a one million pound uh, pot that is is there to support the COVID nineteen recovery uh, within communities uh, and within the cricket uh, community. Uh, the expressions of interest forms are up on the ECB website and it's. That's, that's how you would apply for that, that process. The grants are there to support the cricket activity in certain areas and help deliver free cricket activity to support that COVID-19 um, recovery. It does focus around urban uh, and deprived areas. Uh, and the deprived area element is, isn't just urban, but it can be rural deprivation as, as well. Uh, it does have a focus on, on children's cricket and delivering national programmes. So, whether that be all stars or dynamos within the community setting. Uh, there is an element of delivering cricket to, to women and girls, and particularly again around the girls area through the national programmes and delivering community based all stars and dynamo sessions there, uh, around uh, disability and also around diverse communities. So those are sort of the, the target areas of the hashtag funds for runs pot. In terms of the, the, the million pound pot, it has been broken up across the country and based on, on a number of geographical uh, map equations, we do have a 10,000 pound pot within, within Oxfordshire. Um, grants normally limited to 3,000 pound, but the ECB have also set aside um, a, a pot for themselves for larger projects, for greater projects that have impact across a multiple number of, of areas, whether that be geographical areas or whether that be the, the areas highlighted above. So there are other ways that it, if it doesn't quite fit in with our pot, there are other ways to be part of the, the funds for runs uh, funding pot as well. Next slide, please, Nick. Thank you very much. So uh, on to disability cricket. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, the ECB relaunched the, the disability um, champion clubs. Uh, again, that was launched at the start of 2020, but with the pandemic and lockdown that never got up and, up and running off, off the ground. 
So again, they've relaunched it for, for 2021. Applications are currently open for clubs who would like to become a disability champion club. Uh, and it's designed to enable clubs to, to engage further with the disability community and make cricket more accessible for people with disabilities. Applications are open until the 30th of April. So we've still got a couple of months for, uh, for those applications to be, to be taken, taken in. Uh, the applications do go direct to the ECB, but the, they do inform us of which clubs are, are applying for the disability champion uh, club funding so we can support as well at a local level. Uh, Dick Giles, our, 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 dis our, dis our head of disability, currently runs um, four disability hubs uh, in partnership with the Lord Taverners. Um, and we have an ambition that if we can to get at least four clubs, if not five, and one in, in one in each local authority area to become a disability champion club. Try to link in with those Lord Taverners hubs as well to give those, those kids that, in, uh, that attend those hubs more opportunity to be part of, of cricket and part of a, a cricket club as well. If you would like further information on this, then please do either go, go direct to, to, to Dick or to myself around that as, as well, please. Next slide, please, Nick. Okay, so I'm going to hand over to, to Paul Short now, who's just going to cover some coach development, and Ed is also going to pick up in this piece around the Cricket Young Leaders course. Paul, Ed, over to you. Thanks, Ash. Thanks, Ash. Thanks Nick. Just, just very quickly, apologies, I think my rather poor BT Wi-Fi let me down in the, in the first one and a few things might have cut out. So just two things if I can reiterate, the youth competition entries close this Friday and the Bernard Tollett entries close a week on Friday. So just wanted to make sure every, everyone was aware of that. Okay, in terms of coach development, um, Oxfordshire Cricket haven't delivered coach development for around five years by ourselves. Um, it'd be mad managed recently uh, obviously last year was a bit of a write-off to some degree because of covid uh, but we're now keen to get up and running again um we had got some sessions a foundation one scheduled for february um uh, but by prior to being able to get invites out to people um the latest lockdown occurred venues shut down and we lost all our associated activities so we, we're starting again on that unfortunately um but we have got a, a real um, drive to, to get these set up and to get courses from to support coach, cricket young leader, young officials and first aid. So we're trying to get all of those up and going and we look to run a lot of them outside during spring, autumn and winter. Um, so really all I'd ask, if anyone's keen on attending any of those, by all means, drop me an email, give me a call and I'll get you on the waiting list and then we can find out what sort of the demand is and we can get those scheduled ASAP. Um, so that's it, really. That, that's all I've got on that one, Ash. Thank you. Just a quickie, really. So I'm just going to pick up on uh, on first. Aid. Thanks, thanks, for that, Paul. And yeah, please do get in contact with Paul if you have any volunteers okay. that, that would like to um, like to get involved in 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 the coach education pathway. Um, there have been a number of questions that have come in over the, the last couple of months around first aid and first aid uh, certificates with, with coaches and, and volunteers first aid certificates running out or, or running down. Um, the, the message we've got from the ECB at this point in time is that they are currently reviewing the, the first aid provision and looking to introduce the new guidance, uh, which does include some minimum requirements and recommended providers as well. Um, ECB do not accept online first aid courses at this stage, so please, whatever you do, do not send your volunteers or coaches onto these these online first aid courses because they will not be accepted as, a, as an update of their, their first aid qualification. Uh, we have been told that we will get a further announcement or further detail from, from the ECB at the end of end of February and the end of February is this Sunday. So uh, hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have more information to share with you um, around the first aid courses uh, and where you, your coaches or your volunteers can go to, to update their, their first aid qualification. Over to you, Ed, please, for Cricket Young Leaders. Thanks, Ash. Um, so this summer, we're encouraging 14 to 16 year olds to enroll on the Young Leaders Programme. So it's targeted at 14 to 16 year old boys and girls. Um, it utilises the values, leadership and large skill characteristics which are embodied within cricket. Um, and it's developed with the aim of providing quality training made up of five modules plus a workshop to progress potential young leaders. It's a pioneering initiative to retain young people within cricket. 
the program is managed by a group giving their time voluntary, voluntarily and is self-funded. And the benefits are that it provides cricket and life leadership skills to the participant. It integrates the 14 to 16 year old into club life. It gets them used to volunteering early on. Um, it links in nicely with the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme. Um, it helps towards their voluntary hours. It provides qualifications and life skills and gaining self-confidence. So this is something that we're going to launch in the next couple of weeks. So if you have got any brothers, sisters, sons, daughters, nephews, cousins that are in that 14 to 16 year old age bracket that want to get into some form of volunteering and coaching around cricket, then this is definitely something that you need to look at. Next slide, please, Nick. Um, yeah, so it creates um, a cohort of volunteers from the young members within your club. Um, it can create capacity at your club, so you can get them doing stuff like fundraising events, maybe become helping out with all-star sessions, helping out on junior training nights. Um, it instills the ethos of volunteering at a young age. Uh, and we've got two information evenings booked. The first one is a mixed session for boys and girls on Tuesday, the 9th of March at 6.30. And there's a girls information session on the 16th of March at 6.30. Um, so if anyone's got anyone interested in those nights, just drop me an email and we'll send you an invite. Brilliant, thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, it's, it's a scheme that we're looking to run this year for the for the first time. Uh, the Cricket Young Leaders course has run across the southeast now for, uh, for around about 10 years and is run by a former ECB employee. Um, we, we are running those evenings on in the in the first couple of weeks of March. So if you or your children, sorry, your 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 juniors or any of the, the parents have an interest in that, then please do drop a Ed a, a message and we can share the link with that. We'll also be putting that out in the in the useful links and it will go be going into the club newsletter next week as well. Um, so just a, a final couple of bits from myself um, around the, the game-wide insurance that the ECB have, have put together. Um, as was mentioned earlier by Stuart and the Safe Hands Management System, which is now up and up and live um, and available to, to the club mark clubs uh, across the country. The ECB are rolling out the Safe Hands Management System uh, within Oxfordshire. We've got 21 club mark clubs who, who are getting first access to that. Um, four of the clubs have already had their access and it's being rolled out on a week by week basis. The ECB are adding uh, 100 clubs to the system uh, on, on each week. Uh, and as, as and when it is your time as a club mark club to have your access to the system, we will be sharing that with you and you'll get your, your details from the ECB. Um, as, a, as a club mark club and as being part of the safe hands management system process, there is also a game wide insurance uh, that the ECB have uh, worked in partnership with Howden's insurance brokers uh, to provide uh, cricket uh, insurance or insurance, sorry, public liability insurance to clubs uh, within, within that process. Uh, as I said, it is only currently open to those club mark clubs uh, who register on the Safe Hands Management System. Um, it is available from your renewal date or the, your next renewal date. Uh, we do appreciate, though, that you might not get access to the Safe Hands Management System before your renewal date. So you will have had communication from the ECB earlier in the year saying that you can still access the, the free insurance prior to access, accessing Safe Hands Management System. So if you haven't received that email from the ECB or you, have, you can't find where that information is, then please do get in contact with me and we can make sure you get access to that as and where you need. As I said, it is free liability insurance given to, to all clubs and there is the option to uh, purchase additional cover uh, as well. Unfortunately, it is only open to those club mark clubs at this point in time because the ECB want to roll out all club mark clubs onto the Safe Hands Management System first. One thing we have though, um, made quite clear to the ECB that the fact that we've only got 21 clubs here in, in Oxfordshire, we don't want to be sat waiting for potentially 100 clubs in, in Yorkshire or Lancashire or, or Surrey, one of the bigger counties, for them to roll all their club mark clubs on before it's available to the next next level of, of clubs within, within Oxfordshire. So we've made it quite clear that we are ready to go when possible uh, for that, for the next level of clubs below club mark clubs to have access to the safe hands management system and potentially the game-wide insurance as well. And from our point of view, the, the next group to target would be those clubs with youth sections or those clubs that are entering our youth competitions as well. The ECB have stated though they would like that this to be available to all credit, accredited clubs over the next two years. Thanks Nick. 
So that's everything from us this, this evening in terms of the in terms of the formal presentation. Um, as I said earlier, we will we have been recording this and we will send out the recording as well, uh, and we will send out a slide with the useful links on. So everything we've referred to this evening. Uh, whether it be email addresses, whether it be links, whether it be website addresses, there will be a slide there for you to, that's got all that in one place. So you can then go into those links and read the, the information at your leisure. Uh, we will also send out all our contact details as well. Um, most of us have been in post for over a year now, and obviously Ed has been with us relatively new in the last seven or eight weeks. Some of you will have been involved in your clubs for a number of years, but some of you will also be new to your clubs and new to your officer roles as well. So we will send out our contact details so that you have our contact details. Again, please don't be shy of getting in contact with us or getting in touch with us. Uh, we are here to support, we are here to help. Um, so what to look forward to over the next couple of weeks. Uh, as Ed has alluded to, there's a Women's and the Girls Forum coming up next week. We've also got our Cricket Young Leaders um, information even starting the week after. Um, a couple of weeks ago, you will have received our first in, a, first in a series of club newsletters, and they're designed to be monthly Q club newsletters. So the second one of those is due out next week, which will have a number, uh, um, a good amount of this information on, plus other additional information is relevant to you within clubs as well. And we will be running another one of these web webinars at the end of, end of March, date to be confirmed at this point, but please do keep an eye out for that date. And on that webinar, as we get much closer to the start of the season, we'll have much more detail on, on the guidance, on what that looks like, on what it looks like in terms of coming out of, coming out of lockdown and how cricket um, can come out of that and start delivering, start playing and start getting back out there. We will go into the, the, the specifics of that guidance as and where we've got it available on that webinar and other topics that are, are relevant at that time. Hopefully by that point, we'll have more and further information on the um, county grant scheme, for example, as well, and we go into detail around that. Um, but thank you very much for everybody for your, for your time this evening. I hope you've all found this very useful and I hope you found this informative. Um, Please, where, where you can, if you have any feedback, we're, we're quite happy to hear it and we're open to hear how we can improve these webinars further. So please do share that with us as well. But thank you very much. Stay safe uh, and please, please do get in contact with us if you do need support. Thank you.